you know what Ron Chin is being a physical presence, a rebounder, um, on the floor, a defensive player firstly, and um, just contributing as um, much as I can. And um, I stay prepared by working hard every day, staying late after practices, coming early before practices, working out with the coaches and all my weaknesses. Anthony Mason. Mason getting good position underneath. There's that pump move, powers to the bucket. And uses the Mason has always been a hard worker. At Springfield Gardens High School in Queens, he was all city in his senior year, even though he only started playing basketball in his junior year. When I tried out for Springfield, I didn't have the talent really to make the team, but I could run and I could jump. And then when he checked the grade, my grade was far and above everybody else. And so he decided that he would rather deal with me than deal with somebody who was on the borderline. That was just a learning year. And the whole summer I took time and trained. He worked with me, he opened the gym for me, you know, when he didn't have to. And I shot around and learned how to handle the ball, you know, real good for a big man. And so it all worked for me in my senior year, which I had a decent year. And I was the only one that got a D1 scholarship. The teachings of a good coach go far beyond the rim on a basketball court. Anthony Mason has carried his high school work ethic not only to his job with the Knicks, but to his responsibilities as husband and father. As an athlete, he knows the importance of being fit. As the father of two children, he has a special appreciation for the importance of his wife's prenatal health as well. When she worked in the hospital, so she pretty much stuck to her job. She knew how important it was. All the nine months, you waiting to see what it's going to be. And you're hoping it's healthy and your biggest concern is that you have a healthy child whether it be a girl or a boy so it's a miracle of childbirth like i said and it's great to see him come out healthy it was beautiful basketball mark jackson with nine of his 11 points here in the fourth quarter danny manning high man for the clippers with 21 mason with the step and he's fouled by manning Helped turn the game around in the fourth quarter. At the five unanswered points, a teardrop, and then the three-point play. Oh, a hard foul ushered by Williams on Anthony. And Oakley and Williams looking to go. Mason grabs Williams from behind. Mason pointing fingers. Mason trying to get away from Norman. Hey, it's perfectly understandable what, what the Clippers did. I mean, Greg Anthony is out there throwing his body around, and it's got to be payback. You can't accept that. Well, getting back to the point of frustration that you mentioned moments ago, this demonstrates it quite clearly. But more of what proceeded, I, I couldn't see exactly the play that knocked Anthony down. I knew he was fouled. But why does Charles Oakley, as he often does, stick his hand in the chest of another player after the whistle and push him? Well, then I think where did that go? That was a reaction to... Uh, it happens all the time. But that's a reaction coming to the protection, I think, of Anthony. But I can certainly understand the, uh, the Clipper reaction on, on Anthony, who was hit with an unsportsmanlike earlier. And then was hit with that flagrant foul on, on Hopper. Here's another look at it. Now let's go to Al Trotwick. All right, Bruce, John Andres will rejoin me in a second. I just got finished speaking with a high-ranking member of the Knicks organization, fully aware of what's going on with Anthony Mason, Greg Anthony, and John Starks through the first half of this game. This is simply a club disciplinary measure against the three for lack of a better term, trash talking. The Knicks are tired of it. They don't want to see any more of it, and it is not consistent with the level of play and the style of play that the Knicks want to see on the floor. Whether this is going to continue for the remainder of this game uh, remains to be seen, but right now, uh, rather harshly treated are the three, at least in terms of Pat Riley on the Knicks, but Pat Riley has the full support of the Knicks organization in what he has done so far in this game. Anthony Mason on the bench, John Starks, he and Greg Anthony, and how about the way the Knicks are handling the three, John, and, and saying to them, no more trash talking. I mean, the team obviously didn't feel it sufficient to just get the three together and say, stop it. They've obviously felt They've obviously felt that the, the three needed to be shown this way, in a very public way, that it's the end of it. Well, fortunately for Pat Riley, it has turned out uh, also to be a, a motion of effectiveness for his team by playing certain players longer moments in the game. Without really uh, 
being abrasive at the same time. Now, I'm going to be tough and I'm going to be aggressive. That's just my nature. But when you come back to the bench and in the huddle, that's not your opponents. You know, that's your team. And uh, you should be able to flip the switch and learn how to relate to your team in a different matter. You know, some people will accept it and some people won't. And they shouldn't have to accept that. You know, it shouldn't be your excuse or your crutch every time that uh, we're in a heated battle. I'm competitive. My fault. You know, you got to learn how to come and speak. That's like if you was in a fight out on the street, you're not going to come in and talk to your mother and, um, abusive way so you have to come and flip the switch and just be mature and professional about the situation grudges and look back if i held grudges i'd be mad at jersey denver portland <laughs> and everybody else so i mean it's it's not about grudges it's about learning process if it was personal and something just to make us look bad we'd be benched half the season and i don't think it's going to be like that the game was taken care of they were well paid had a sense of security Grant drives in Foul has been charged to Anthony Mason. And Harvey Grant hitting the two. And the bullets. Flagrant foul call on Anthony Mason. Anthony Mason, number 14. That is another very sensitive foul. Um, the flagrant foul judgment is made when a player is judged not playing the ball but playing the body. And he simply could not reach the ball on that play. His arm was there and the body came up and banged into him. Another very, very tightly judged uh, uh, call by the officials. Well, a moment ago, Anthony Mason picked up a flagrant foul and it was back in training camp that we sat down and uh, talked with Anthony uh, about his uh, feelings about the uh, the hard play. I'm getting a message play. from him as far as being more professional to the fact that, you know, you represent the Knicks and not just on the court, <clears throat> not just on the court, but off the court also. When you walk down the street, when you are uh, involved in talking to students, a lot of people look up to you. A lot of little kids look up to you and so say you want to carry yourself in a professional manner. He's uh, sat me down a few times and talked to me about being more professional. I've got a lot of New York street in me. And now I'm on a different level where I can't do the same things I used to do and I can't act the same way I used to act. So I just have to mature a little bit more. And, uh, Professionalism is important because nobody's going to like a team just because they win and then the people get on the street and act, you know, foolish. They want to see a team act, you know, professional on the court and off the court. So it's really an important factor. Anthony Mason showing he's sensitive to the growth process and it takes some time. I agree. It's really the looks. Now, that wasn't enough about it. It wasn't enough about it. So Mason has hit double figures. He has 10. Well, for once tonight, Anthony Mason got in low without any big people bothering him. And that's his way of expressing his happiness. Maybe Mike Francesa made the list out. And he that's in a quote from Michael Jordan. He's referring to uh, Mason Starks and Anthony. Man, those guys are unbelievable. They're three of the cockiest in the league. They've only been in the league two years. They've still got a lot to prove. Talking about all the trash talking from uh, last season. Over to help. Good switching by the Knicks. Duckworth. And Drexler and Mason have words. But Williams steps between. Oakley calls for the foul. You rarely see Clyde Drexler get involved. I was thinking earlier, Marv, I don't think I've ever seen him angry. He's such a cool guy, and uh, it is unusual to point out. Kevin Duckworth. Three seconds! Three seconds! Three seconds! Mason, back out for Blackman. Close to the runner, and had it rejected. Shot clock at four. Mason to the reverse. What a move by Anthony Mason with the 24-second clock running down. Next lead, 43-26. Porter lost it to Rivers. Four on two for the next. Oh, Rivers for Mason. The basket counts. A gorgeous pass by Doc Rivers. Rivers got beat, but he hung in on the play and took the ball. Watch this pass. He sizes things up. 
Didn't indicate it by his eyes, but he saw Mason. Jump shot drill, and it just paid off. A lot of hard work pays off. That's what my mother always told me. Yeah, and it's paid off very well for you, and obviously the Knicks now settling into a, an eight-man rotation, which is kind of what Coach Riley feels comfortable with, and that uh, obviously means you and Anthony and, and Starks off the bench, and you guys, the three of you, have gotten a little reputation in the league. I mean, Jordan says, these three guys talk more than anybody in the league who has never won a championship. What you, and I even caught you at the end of that game when you're knocking the Bulls around on Saturday, going over, saying a little something to Jordan, saying a little something to Pippen. What were you saying? See you Christmas night? I was just reminding them of me being <laughs> one of the cockiest players in the league. You know, I saw the statement in the paper also. Um, I, mean, I don't think it's as much as cocky as it is, just confidence. We have an organization that shows us a lot of confidence. They put us on the floor in crunch time. They put us on the floor in important times of the game. And our confidence level is just up. It's not being cocky. We just know that we're in there to boost the team up, and that's what our jobs every night, and that's what we go out and do. You know, I honestly get the feeling, what, sitting courtside for that game against the Bulls, Bulls, not only the physical presence of the Knicks, I think the Bulls are a little afraid of you. You know that? Uh, I don't know. I think they're afraid you're going to go in there and bang them around. They don't like getting banged around, number one. They, you know, you go in there and bang them around pretty good. I don't know whether they fear. They're a great team. They meet a whole lot of competition. But I think they know we're about there. That's... So I guess that's a little fear within itself. They know that we're coming after them. They know we're aggressive. We know we're not going to give them nothing easy. And we're just after the Bulls, you know. Hopefully one day we'll win the championship. And then we'll have the right to talk, me, Greg, and Stark. <laughs> <laughs> then you will have the right. Then right. they can't say anything, as a matter of fact. You know, when you and Oak are in there together, boy, I'll tell you something. That's banging some guys around. Because Oak, Oak's inspired. He's playing well. Right. You two on the boards are murder. Right, that's uh, another thing me and him talk about just as well as me, Greg, and Starks talks about giving the team a boost off the bench. Me and Hope talks about putting bodies on people. A little chat with Jordan, a little chat with Pippen. Did Coach Riley pick up on that or he didn't see it? No, nah, I don't think he really picked up on it. Because <laughs> that was in the last minute of the game. I just happened to notice you go to Jordan and to Pippen and sat a little. Last couple of minutes, there was about five minutes left of the game. As a matter of fact, it was way out of hand. Just had to let him know I was there. Uh, That'll be a little fun on Christmas night. Yeah, we're going to have to National be TV. there too because they're going to be after us for what we did to them here in the garden. They're going to come out and play hard, and we just got to bring the same intensity, the same aggressiveness, as I said, to Chicago. In 30 minutes, at 25 points and 10 rebounds. The new expanded repertoire was on full display. Anthony Mason with the best game he's ever had in the NBA. Yet another happy chapter in the story of a New York City man basically told to forget it, in effect saying now, yeah, forget this. Anthony Mason's performance yet on Saturday, part of a Knicks victory over Milwaukee, that was big. A few years ago, I didn't really think I'd be in this league. Um, you know, I always thought um, optimistically, but I didn't know that I would make such a big impact in the league. So I guess a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have thought so. I played a great game. Uh, he had a lot of very positive numbers, but we still want Mace to step up and help more defensively. You know, so even though his numbers were very illustrious numbers, uh, we always find something in his game to say, hey, you know, you can still do this to become more of a complete player, and he understands that. Coming up at halftime, Bruce back with a special look at Anthony Mason, otherwise known as the locksmith, of course. Big first half for Anthony Mason, 14 points and five rebounds. And you know, Mason was the center of controversy earlier this season. On November 21st, he and Greg Anthony and John Starks were benched by head coach Pat Riley for trash talking the game before in Los Angeles and for what Riley called unprofessional behavior. To Mason's credit, he accepted the discipline and he agreed with Coach Riley that he needed to do some maturing. Meanwhile, on the basketball court, Anthony Mason has been maturing a lot over the past two seasons as his growth as a ball player has really skyrocketed. The New York Knicks tough guy. He's assertive, strong, and respected by opponents around the NBA. He's Anthony Mason, who has turned his NBA career around since arriving in New York City. 
He comes off the bench and adds plenty of fire and firepower. And his versatility for a big guy is impressive. He's got the muscle of a center, the skills of a guard. A fan favorite, Mason has improved his scoring and rebounding numbers this year, despite the fact he's still coming off the bench for Pat Riley. It's not about starting. The difference between a start and a person come off the bench is you get your name called out, you know, in front of the crowd. If I'm just a winner and I'm a competitor, and if he wants me to start, I'm going to come out just as hard. If he wants me to come off the bench, I'm going to come off the bench just as hard. When Mason does come off the bench, you can expect plenty of defense. First, it's the speed, then the hand, then the body. No defensive situation is ever considered unimportant to the locksmith, who ties up opponents and does it with a ferocity which intimidates other players. His defensive prowess appreciated by coach Pat Riley. Anthony Mason, to me, is developing into one of the best defensive players in this league. Uh, probably the fastest player that we have on the team, save for Greg Anthony or maybe John Starks in a foot race. Uh, he has great uh, strength and, uh, and flexibility and versatility, who is a defensive player and a rebounder, uh, first and foremost. My whole thing is to shut him down. I mean, make his game uncomfortable to where he don't, he want to, he's just looking forward to the next game. He's just relieved to get out of the game. Um, it's a New York thing. Um, basketball is not just skill in New York. It's a whole lot of talking and it's real competitive. So. In order to shut somebody's mouth up, you shut them down. Because one person scoring and you scoring, you still gonna constantly talk back and forth. So my whole thing is to shut them down and uh, display that locksmith image that I'm trying to put out this year. Mason Martin trying to improve his game with special emphasis on adding art to his outside shot. I've been working on shooting about two to three hundred shots a day, working with Jeff Van Gundy, shooting quick, shooting, getting my foot my feet under me to keep my balance and like you said putting more arc on the ball you have a lot more play out of the ball by putting more arc on it you don't give yourself a chance by shooting a line drop so he's six seven he'd love to play the role of point guard for the next well, i'll tell you right, i'm gonna play point for uh, my career though i feel like i can handle the ball i feel like a eventually defensive point i just like i like making the team better you know and i know i can pass i love coming up on a break dishing the ball off and in a, an offense like Coach Riley's, I mean, you really, you have a point, but you can look like a point even at another position. He allows me to come up on the break and dish the ball off. And that's basically what I'm saying. I want to be a playmaker one day. As far as running an offense and having to think for four of the players right now, I don't know if that is his game. With a little work, a little hard work, I can do anything I want to do. For toughness, Anthony Mason lives by one credo. I'm the locksmith. I'm going to lock you up. Bad the ball. Number 14, Anthony Mason, played 14 minutes in the first half. He scored 14 points. The locksmith lives on. Not off. Anthony Mason with his locksmith thing, he has us thinking in these. I know. I thought of that. Keyhole. Keyhole. Yeah. Third foul on Anthony Mason. Johnson played by Starks. Johnson lost it. Mason for Starks. Back the other way for Mason. Extraordinary play. The Knicks with an enormous percentage in the fourth quarter to regain the game. Mason misses. Gets his own rebound. And gets fouled and exchange his words with Isaiah Thomas, oh, who thought Isaiah, about throwing the ball He out. has a lot to hold himself back. Isaiah's bursting. He wants to go at Mason. And he's coming. He continues to come. Mason has a shield of Knicks around him. And Isaiah will not let up. A little playoff carryover, perhaps. And Ron Rothstein, knowing the competitive fire of Isaiah, is right out there to contain him. Now it's turned into smiles. Both coaches on the floor. Rodman Tuff denies that shot attempt by Mason. Mason, however, with his strength, because then he gets that rebound, and he's massaged, and then gives Isaiah a mouthful. Well, John, how about Mason winning that battle with Rodman in position to grab the rebound? Tremendous strength of Anthony Mason made it happen. 
Well, you remember what the what made the Bad Boys famous a few years ago. And Mason fails to seize the moment. 35.5 seconds to go. Starks with a word of encouragement for Mason, his benchmate. And the Knicks lead 92-88. Friendly gesture by Starks to Thomas. Got to be delighted with what he's seeing with Ewing on the bench. Here's Starks. And a loose ball foul is called. Oh, Mason shoving the ball into the chest of Thompson. Herb Williams called for the foul. There is no great love between several Knicks and LaSalle Thompson. Remember the incident last year, LaSalle Thompson got involved with Xavier McDaniel. And other activities to make himself stronger and ready for these situations. Oh, Ewing and Smith started to go. Davis looks to get involved. Shrimp also very angry. Patrick Ewing and Rick Smith. Will there be any, be any cause for ejection because no punches were, were thrown, just pushing and shoving? Well, they say double fouls, and Ewing will go to the bench after picking up his fifth under five minutes remaining of the game. Starks. Oh, he's forward by Davis. And here we go again. Anthony Mason went at Dale Davis. Greg Anthony steps in. That's the second time tonight that John Starks has been hammered. I think it's ridiculous, Marv, that every time a player gets hit, a Nick player has to go over and defend the situation. It's just a tremendous overreaction. It's unnecessary, and it only ignites further problems. Who's, who's the tough guy? Is everybody a tough guy? So he got fouled. Well, I don't agree with you here. Well, I, I, I think this is a... It's gotten to the point, even though the Knicks are a very rough physical team, Indiana's trying to send a message, but you got to protect the player here. That's, I mean, this, how are you protecting him? Well, you got to show that you, you got to show that you don't accept this. You do it at the other end. When then. a player, that's easy to say, but in the heat of the action, I don't know. Like, yes, I agree with you partially, but I'm just, it's just getting sickening watching this constantly. Everybody flexing their muscles uh, after a hard play. Well, that's a bad foul. That, that's that's no worse bordering than, on ejection. No worse than the other fouls. The Knicks perform too. I'm not. I, yeah. I say the Knicks are certainly guilty. A fan favorite at the Garden. He will be dearly missed. Anthony Mason. Once a Nick, always a Nick. Anthony Mason epitomized not only the beloved hard scrabble Knicks teams of the 1990s, but also his rugged blue collar New York City roots. A late bloomer out of Springfield Gardens in Queens, he played his college ball at Tennessee State before being drafted by Portland in 1988. He had to grind it out overseas and the minor leagues before he finally got his big break with his hometown New York Knicks in 1991. For all the young kids coming up, that's that's my little motto too, to never give up. You know, if you want to be something, keep striving for it no matter how long it takes.